So, thank you. Um, I am Irene Maviglia from CMCC in Bologna, Italy, and I'm going to talk about the Atlantic Multidecadal Variability, which is examined here in a set of uh, multi-century pre-industrial uh, simulations performed with uh, different coupled general circulation models. And the focus is on the assessment of AMV stationarity. Here I briefly show you two illustrative examples of no stationarity found in uh, NIO time series on the left based on observations and in ENSO time series on the right based on a model. Regarding NIO, RL and Valloon notice the no stationary behavior in the time evolution. If you look at the bottom panel, you can see that the that the large part of NIO variance comes from the, um, at biennial periods, comes from the uh, early part of the record, if you see this uh, um, gray area at the top right corner, while uh, uh, the variability between six and 10 uh, years uh, is more pro prominent during the latter half of the record. This indicating uh, that there is a shift in the associated to the um, period of the largest uh, NIO variability. Regarding Enso, uh, Wittenberg, uh, in this very long simulation, 2,000 year long simulation, he identified different regimes of variability uh, that are highlighted here in uh, colored boxes. So we can see periods with very intense events, periods with hardly any variability, and periods with, um, that are very irregular or regular, both in amplitude and uh, periods. So the, there are periods that resemble the temporal sequence of the observational record that is reported uh, on the bottom. And, uh, but there are also other periods that may not contain the, the same oscillation. So, however, we don't know about the Atlantic uh, multidecadal variability stationarity. So, my fo the focus of this research is on the AMV. We've already seen these uh, pictures. So, these are the observed uh, AMV and the um, average of the North Atlantic sea surface temperature in the black box uh, gives us the time series on the top. And we can see that the multidecadal component of uh, variability spectrum is only marginally resolved because observations uh, last, um, last uh, 100, 150 years at most. So uh, the question is, are these, uh, detect, are these observed um, oscillatory changes um, truly representative of the long-term AMV behavior that can emerge looking at longer data sets? So we know from uh, proxy analysis from Sanger et al, 2009, that uh, Atlantic SST in um, it was very, uh, had very different uh, spectral characteristics in the past because uh, only the last periods um, show power at multidecadal time scale similar to the observed AMV here, while there is no such uh, uh, significant multidecadal uh, power at, uh, for other past periods. Epoch. So we can wonder if uh, in the future, uh, also in the future, AMV will have uh, different uh, spectral characteristics. We can start so with uh, our research, uh, looking at the phenomenology, so the first evidence of uh, no stationarity in uh, AMV time series. I, we looked at the um, uh, low frequency and internal variability, so we selected only the longest and pre-industrial simulation that are, the analyzed models are listed uh, in the table. And uh, on the left side, uh, you can see the um, time series, the corresponding time series, and uh, already from a visual inspe inspection, we can uh, uh, guess an stationary behavior uh, in fact, in analogy with uh, Wittenberg's approach, 
I pointed out at uh, different epochs with different characteristics uh, that uh, we can identify in the MV uh, time series. So, for example, uh, we can see mostly periods with mostly warm skewed events in red, periods with uh, moderate, nearly sinusoidal events in green, and uh, period with intense and um, longer period events in purple, and uh, small amplitude events in uh, yellow. So, uh, a time evolving view of AMV spectral features highlights a strong dependence, uh, to, strong dependence to the selected time interval, uh, revealing the nociationality as a prominent feature of AMV. Here, um, AMV autocorrelation is diagnosed for chunks of moving uh, 200 year long windows. And for most of the models, we can see that the dominant autocorrelation time scale changes with the period. And um, here I show you two limit cases. So for most of the model, we found uh, the, that the AMV is no stationary. No stationary. Uh, for example, like in the MPI SMLR model, where uh, a 50 year time scale characterized the initial part of the record, later shortening down to a 25 year long time scale, uh, as indicated by these sloping contours. Uh, on the other hand, the NOR ESM 1M model shows uh, an almost stationary AMV throughout the whole length of the series. So, we need a statistical test in order to objectively assess this uh, detected uh, non-stationarity. And uh, the question now is, uh, does this um, AMV modulation arise by chance? So the null hypothesis is a statistically stationary AMV uh, with uh, no underlying cause uh, more than uh, uh, a round of outcomes of flipping a, a coin. So, in order to check this, we create a large set of analytical time series um, uh, with the same spectrum than the true one, but with the random phases in, their, uh, in each of their Fourier modes. And we use this distribution to compute a confidence band for autocovariance and see if there are um, true values that exceed this confidence band. These are the results, so all the points, the circles above the red line are the, the models that pass the test. So for most of the models, 10 out of 11 models, we can, see, we can say that their AMV time series is not stationary. That means that they, these models display epochs characterized with, um, by autocovariance, which significantly deviates from the autocovariance of the whole time series. Uh, now we are looking at the mechanisms, so in particular what drives this detected uh, AMV no stationarity, and we expected the um, changes in AMV AMOC relationship and changes in teleconnection patterns to understand the role of uh, internal ocean only processes and coupled uh, atmosphere ocean interaction processes. A widely accepted candidate uh, we have already seen to, uh, to explain the Atlantic multidecadal variability is the AMOC. In fact, uh, a lagged correlation, AMV AMOC correlation for the entire time series show, shows that uh, for all the models, the maximum of uh, lagged correlation of course, when AMOC leads uh, AMV by a few years, uh, you can see the year of uh, maximum correlation in red. So it ranges between one year to six years. And uh, this is coherent with the mechanism that an increase of, uh, in the overturning drives uh, the warming of the Atlantic. But if we look uh, this relationship in a time evolving view, so again for chunks of 200 year time window, we can see that the AMVM correlation undergoes significant fluctuations with time. 
and um, alternating period with higher correlation and periods with very low, low correlation. Uh, in particular, I highlighted here in these green boxes a uh, detected decrease in, in VMOC correlation that may suggest that even uh, if uh, AMOC uh, does generally play an important role in uh, Atlantic multidecadal variability, but there are also other factors that may contribute. So we, in order to understand this, we look at the role of the atmosphere atmosphere-ocean interactions processes are studied here in, with the maximum covariance analysis, MCA, applied to North Atlantic SST from the oceanic side and global sea level pressure as a representative of atmospheric surface circulation. So large uncertainties among the models uh, do not allow to associate specific uh, MCA patterns to a specific AMV regime of variability. Nevertheless, for most of the model, AMV autocorrelation presents um, a shorter time scale, around 20 years, that uh, seems to alternate with a longer time scale, around 60 years. And two modes uh, can be identified uh, looking at the MCA homogeneous and the corresponding heterogeneous maps. So um, the shorter mode um, is associated with a triple in the North Atlantic SST that corresponds to a strong signal in the North Atlantic uh, uh, NIO-like forcing. Whereas uh, uh, when AMV presents a lower frequency time scale, we, this mode features a monopole AMV-like in North Atlantic SST and uh, um, weaker signal in uh, North Atlantic uh, with respect to mode one. So this mm, suggests that in this case, the dynamics, uh, the dynamics could be especially inside the ocean. This is more evident, very evident in the MPI-SMP model. So we choose this model as case of study. In, and this model, um, its North Atlantic SST spectrum presents two uh, piece, peaks uh, at these uh, multi, uh, multi-decadal time scales. So we applied the same st statistical test in order to understand which time scale contributes uh, most to the no stationarity of the entire time series. So we pass band filtered the time series in these two gray band. Uh, regions, so from 20 to 40 and 40 to 80 years. And these are the results. So the long time scales contributes most to the no stationarity of the entire time series with more than 15% of values that exceed the, the confidence band. Um, so um, we turning from the statistical to the physical point of view, uh, these two time, scale are, time scales are associated with the two modes of variability. Here you can see the uh, lagged correlation between uh, mixed layer depth, uh, sea surface temperature, sea surface salinity, and subsurface density averaged over the Labrador Sea. So these are Labrador Sea anomalies correlated with the North Atlantic SST index for the short time scale here on the left and the long time scale on the right. And here uh, we can see the differences. So uh, starting from the short time scale, we can see that uh, the cooling of SST, the blue curve at lag minus 13, leads an increase in mixed air depth and density. So the red and the pink curve and um, this, in turn, uh, uh, leads to uh, AMOC becomes stronger, and uh, so warm water, more warm waters are transpo is transported to the Labrador Sea region or convection sites. And uh, so since the temperature uh, feedback is negative, this allows the oscillation we see in, for the short time scale. Uh, situation is different for, for the long time scale because uh, here uh, 
temperature is in phase both with the mixed layer depth and uh, density curve. S but uh, since we know that um, warmer water, warm waters prevent the deep water formation, so in this case, the salinity, that is the green curve, um, is more effective as a feedback for in driving the density anomalies. And this could explain also why here the time scale is longer, because um, salinity feedback is positive, so it tends to maintain the original state. And um, also because uh, the Temperature anomalies are rapidly damped uh, by heat fluxes with respect to salinity anomalies. Concluding, in most of the analyzed models, uh, um, AMV exhibits an stationary behavior. The relationship, uh, AMV AMOC relationship, is intermittent, alternating period with a higher and lower correlation. And in most of the models, uh, short term time scales alternates with a longer time scale, and this is found also in observations. If you look at the, the plot here, the central England temperature record, we can see these two time scales significantly uh, above the, the red noise spectrum. And uh, for MPI ESM model in particular, these two time scales correspond to different uh, modes where uh, Temperature feedback prevails at short time scale and uh, salinity feedback prevails at long time scale. So the message is the, the stationarity detected uh, here uh, suggests that the character of the observed AMV may undergo significant changes in the future. So we should be careful in relying only on the uh, observations because uh, they cannot they can not be truly representative of the long-term behavior of AMV. And again, the importance of uh, reducing the model inconsistency is even more important in, in the light of the nutritionality detected uh, here. Thank you.